I'm Peter van der Putten, and I'm a director for AI solutions at American software company called Pega Systems. And next to that, I'm also an assistant professor at Leiden University in the Netherlands in the area of uh, AI. And basically I look at, um, uh, you know, the, the impact of AI in business, uh, research, uh, arts and science. Is technology good or bad? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, like, let me use a, a quote uh, from Melvin Kranzberg, the law of technology, or one of his laws. A technology is neither good nor bad, nor is it neutral. And I think the same applies to AI technology. And that's a statement that you can interpret it interpret in, uh, in, in different ways, right? But uh, I think it alludes to that AI in general, uh, a technology in general, um, it's hard to say whether it's good or bad because the same technology can be used for good purposes and bad purposes, especially, and it's especially the case in AI, which is a fairly generic technology where we can learn to, to become intelligent, to, to solve uh, problems in a smart, smart way by, by learning from, from feedback and from data. So the same AI techniques can be used to, you know, find a cure for cancer or to do, to do something evil, to implement uh, uh, mass surveillance. You could explain it as uh, maybe not at the general technology. It's hard to say whether it's good or bad, but it's never neutral because the moment you build a particular AI application for a particular purpose, uh, then it's it's never neutral. There's always choices that you make in well, for starters, for what is the purpose? Is it for mass surveillance or are we curing cancer? But it's also more nuanced. You know, like how do I approach this problem? What kind of data do I select to train these systems? What kind of logic do I embed in, in automated decisions? The idea of so-called advanced technology is often met with a level of skepticism. And as we hand over more of our everyday tasks to machines, this question is one that many will have. Should we be afraid of AI? AI is not just about the F of fear. For me, it's also about the F of fascination. Eh? Because um, if we were just afraid of it, it would have disappeared as a meme, uh, but, but we are really fascinated by AI because we're fascinated by ourselves, essentially, you know? What is intelligence? Where is it coming from? How can it evolve? Uh, those, those are questions that uh, not just AI researchers have been asking for 50 years, but philosophers have been asking these questions for 2000 years or even down back to the Neanderthals. Uh, but we should take an active role and learn to live alongside AI. And, and make the be yeah make the best use of it. So rather than fear AI, we should ask a different question: How can AI benefit us? Uh, yet another good question. Of course, uh, people sometimes also align it with uh, things like the UN uh, uh, Sustainable Development Goals and, and and things like that. And there's obviously quite a few areas uh, where you could uh, apply that. Uh, uh, one one you know an obvious one maybe in these days of COVID. Uh, is, is healthcare, right? So uh, the use of this intelligence to, to do drug discovery uh, in silico experimentation of different uh, types of drugs, but also more generic, you know, more generically when we think about uh, people with certain uh, uh, handicaps, uh, how can we, uh, how can we uh, help the blind see again or the deaf hear again? Another one, and of course, where we've seen a lot of progress recently in AI is around language and understanding of language. There's still a lot, lot of work to do, but obviously uh, language is the way how we express our culture, how we share, how we can have a, a quicker evolution than just natural selection, eh? the cultural evolution. So if we can uh, break down uh, the barriers across different languages, uh, it will enable um, yeah, potentially disadvantaged people to learn uh, uh, you can imagine if you don't speak English, but if there's good language technology um, and, you know, I could just have a nowadays a relatively cheap smartphone and I could still get um, the same access to, well, sim, not the same, but maybe similar levels of action or better access of, to, to, to knowledge and education. And, it, and maybe it can also help uh, people to understand each other better. And maybe the third area could be uh, in the topics like climate change, for example. Eh? So um, it's about a simulation of, uh, of climate or simulation of different uh, instruments that we have to fight climate change, uh, that AI could play a role there as well. Many good examples of what AI can do for us. 
but what has it already done for us? Yeah, so, um, well, there's, again, you know, there's myriads, myriads of ways how AI uh, has impacted uh, the world or maybe also our everyday lives. Uh, like, uh, I mean, take, take the likes of Google, where you, whether you hate, hate them or love them, uh, we, we're, we're all using it on a, on a daily basis. One of the, the research projects I work on also has to do with sign language, right? So uh, how, can we, how can we understand sign language? Um, uh, can we automatically extract meaning? And also um, using systems that maybe originally were more trained on typical Western European uh, uh, people. And so I'm here we're, we're trying to make sure that we can apply these methods also in, you know, uh, in, 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 in different domains. So I think that's that's also an example of, um, you know, uh, potentially good applications of, uh, of of AI. We are beginning to hear of bias in AI systems and the results that they produce. How do we avoid this and make sure that we overcome the inherent bias in the data that AI accesses and uses? So there could be uh, different ways uh, how AI could could become uh, biased. Uh, basically, you could say um, it, it, that it kind of ties back to what are some of the key ingredients of how AI really works, right? So uh, um, take, um, um, take a computer chess program, you know, Alan Turing, he wrote the first computer chess program. And what he did, he kind of took the rules of the game uh, and because that would tell you how you could move a particular piece on the board, but you also need rules around what is likely to be a good move. And this way you can play against yourself and. And you can think ahead and you can prune this search space to make uh, the, 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 the right um, decisions. So that's rules and reasoning. And the other side of AI is more around uh, machine learning. Yeah? Because how would you know? And Turing knew that as well himself. He said, well, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm not the best chess player in the world. So who knows whether I came up with the right rules here. Uh, maybe they're based on my assumptions and biases. And now how can I ever become better? And so um, both through reasoning and logic and rules, as well as through learning, that bias can creep in. And rules, because they're based on maybe certain assumptions that we make in these very explicit logic and rules that are essentially biased and wrong. Uh, now, the good thing about learning is to some extent they can counter, uh, counter that because Machine learning can actually learn from data and from evidence, but it doesn't make it value free. The, the, what kind of data I feed to the system will actually influence uh, whether if I feed it biased information, uh, the model is, is, is uh, it's not good or bad, it's blind and it will take whatever data you feed it and whatever correlations you feed it and, 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 and it will draw its conclusion based on the data. So we are aware of the potential pitfalls and challenges in data and systems. But what does it mean when people refer to the term ethical AI? Well, uh, ethical AI uh, is not just about bias, uh, but it, it, it introduces also other aspects around, uh, around AI. For instance, transparency, you know, like uh, you can imagine you, want, you may want to have a balance between how accurate uh, particular AI is versus can we still understand um, the decisions that are made by uh, AI? Yeah, maybe some super duper deep learning neural network. We may think that it gives more accurate predictions, but if we don't really understand, you know, how it gets to those predictions, maybe we should not be using it for uh, particular uh, particular use cases. Um, what's, what's kind of aligned with that aspect of transparency is explainability or explainable AI. And can we, can we ask the AI uh, how it got to a particular prediction or decision uh, for for one particular for one particular case, robustness is another one, right? So, when people talk about developing AI systems, they sometimes think very much in terms of, you know, oh, I'm developing this AI and I need to check it's not biased, and then, then you know, when I did all those checks, I can release it in the wild. I'm done. Uh, but of course, robustness is about how can the you know how does the AI behave, and uh, to use a good to use a bit of a techie term, at runtime, yeah? So how can it adapt and learn over time? Uh, but fundamentally, um, uh, I think uh, when a lot of people talk about AI ethics, they say um, they frame it in terms of ethical constraints. You know, this is what we're not allowed to do, 
and then other than that, you know, game on. I think that's the wrong, the wrong way to look at ethics. Uh, ethics is not just about what you cannot do. Ethics should be how to lead a good life, or if you translate it to AI, it's it's what are what are the best ways to apply AI, right? So it goes, it also goes way beyond regulation, right? So it, it it's really saying uh, maybe the most fundamental lesson is is uh, uh, making sure that you use it in the best interest to, let's say for your customers or citizens, not just to the benefit of you as a government or you as a company. And there, need, needs to be, there needs to be this kind of um, um, uh, responsibility in applying AI uh, where, where, you, um, where you have this golden rule, this, this ethics of don't do to others what you want, don't you want, want to be done to you, right? So I think that's the most fundamental, actually AI ethical aspect and you don't see a lot of discussion about it because it but but for me it's the most fundamental one as ai evolves it is becoming apparent that the technology is integrating with knowledge-based companies how do you see this playing a major role in the businesses and economies of tomorrow so we have roughly let's say three areas uh, where we're using uh, ai and uh, one is more in in one-to-one -one customer engagement one-to-one uh, -one marketing uh, you could use AI to become more relevant, to understand customer needs, uh, anticipate what they want, uh, understand what's important to them in the moment and, and really provide relevant next best actions. How can we anticipate and can we predict customer problems and fix them before they happen? And so it would help us to, to become more proactive in our customer service. Fundamentally, the, the, the third area where we apply it is, is, is intelligent automation, where AI can help is to go beyond automation into optimization. History has taught us that technology tends to deliver benefits over the longer term. How do you see the future for AI playing out? And in what areas do you think that we might see the most advances? Uh, I must say that uh, there's also another law, which is called Amara's Law, uh, uh, that people tend to overestimate the effect of a certain technology in the short term. And there, you see it in AI, people are already kind of, uh, are robots taking over the world next year? But they underestimate the effects in the long term. I'm, I'm a sucker for quotes, eh, but there's another one: is uh, first we shape the tools, and then the tools shape us. Yeah. So first we invent AI, but then AI starts to invent us. We start to behave differently uh, because of the AI. I think ultimately, um, uh, yeah, I, th I think there's a big opportunity to to for AI to help with. Um, not with just with the glamorous things like self-driving cars, but, uh, but also with automating away a lot of the mundane work that's happening in, in, in businesses, right? So, and, and optimizing those, those kind of rather mundane tasks. The term digital transformation is everywhere. What does it mean for you and how does AI fit into it? Digital transformation is not just automating. It's not just taking your existing paper processes and then put them into uh, a digital system. Uh, it, transformation is really about doing things differently eh? in, a more, uh, in, a more optimal, in a more optimal manner. If we want to keep up with the kids, uh, we, we, we better do that, right? Because they have, you know, these kind of more modern expectations of the, of the they're the, the other side of the equation. They're the future consumers. Uh, these are the expectations that uh, kids would have from the companies that they actually uh, deal with. If we want to satisfy the needs of those future consumers, uh, we, we better kind of digitally transform. And because they will vote with their feet, they will work with a competitor, bank, telco, insurance company, whatever, as opposed to uh, the, the companies that not have transformed. Not just companies, but also governments or public organizations and, and, and ultimately uh, in, individuals. Uh, so... Uh, I think you just need to look at uh, whatever, how, uh, I don't know, uh, how a 12 year old is updating her uh, Snapchat or whatever. You can see a uh, digital transformation at an individual level in full swing. If I were to ask you for some predictions for AI in the next 10 years, what would they be? But I think we'll uh, see a big move from uh, not just the photogenic uh, applications of AI, the, the self-driving cars, and uh, uh, the prosthetic robot uh, limbs uh, to, uh, um, to actually solving 
uh, very mundane, everyday processes and work. Maybe doing um, things in a better way, but not doing better things, right? So I think we really need to, uh, what, what really will happen is that it will be used to, to go beyond automation into optimizing for business and customer outcomes and using the smarts of AI uh, to, to really drive towards like, uh, you know, what, what is the best process we should execute now? Going beyond hyper automation into business optimization. I think in terms of our relationship with AI and AI in society, uh, there's a lot of um, developments now around ethical AI and responsible AI. Uh, so we're essentially, I think we're going to move or have to move from AI puberty to AI, well, let's say, let's be a little bit modest to AI adolescence. AI in, in research, and, and, and it's also interesting then to, to not be restricted to just intelligence, uh, but to move to these other topics of artificial creativity or artificial uh, emotions or artificial uh, whatever makes us, uh, makes us human, or ultimately artificial morality. Yeah? When uh, one of the, the key cornerstones of AI ethics for me is not about transparency and bias and all of those things, which are very important, uh, but can all be summarized to the golden rule of, uh, uh, you know, uh, don't do to others what you, what you don't want to be done uh, to you, right? So how can we build that, uh, those ethical principles into logic and AI that, that companies use to interact with customers, for example, uh, to make sure that you're not just maximizing your own profit, but you're, uh, you're, you're maximizing, yeah, you're optimizing the value the customer is getting out of the relationship. But, but it's really important to help customers, but also employees or your B2B, business to business counterparts yeah. to get stuff done, you know, just help people to, to, to get stuff done and, and not just by automating it, but, 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 you know, being smart about trying to understand what is the outcome that the customer wants here or that the business needs or that the employee needs to 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 reach and how can we use the intelligence to to get you to that outcome quicker faster or maybe also to 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 better outcomes i think that's the big opportunity actually and uh, you, you can see ai now trickling down into these kind of uh into these core business processes that we are executing anywhere in, in, in a business and, and, and not just automating the steps, uh, but maximizing the outcomes so to, uh, to make it easier for the customer, better for the employees, deliver the outcomes for the business.